didn't pop up yet. Now this plays all week. to Tuesday's edition of Your Community Accountability with Sam and Dave. And we have two special guests here in the studio tonight, uh, Assemblyman Angelo Morinello and San Quinn Starks from the 716 United uh, Basketball Program. Gentlemen, thanks for showing up tonight. You're welcome. My Thank pleasure. You. Thank you. Well, we're going to get back to you, uh, to you men in a couple minutes. I'm just going to go around the room here for a little bit. Uh, just to let you folks know out there tonight... Uh, you know, yes, uh, Mr. Morinello is in here. He is our assemblyman. But tonight is going to be a no call in for politics. Okay, uh, they have some other things to discuss, and we're going to try to stay away from politics and and talk about some programs that are going on here in the city. So please be mindful of that. Uh, you know, you're more than welcome to call in, but uh, we're going to stay away from politics tonight. But anyways, Dave, how you doing? I'm doing great. I, I was really excited uh, to have these uh, two gentlemen here for sure. Um, you know, the, the sports is right down my lane, and I know Mr. Morinello, uh, when he was on here last time, I thoroughly enjoyed it and learned a lot. So I also wanted to, um, you know, let it, remember today's Remembrance Day, December 7th. Yes. Uh, a lot of people died for what we're doing right now, uh, for the freedom that we do have, and I just uh, want to remember that. My brother, who actually passed away, is also born on oh, December didn't, 7th. I didn't know that. I oh, yeah. didn't know that. Yeah. Very sorry. So, sorry to hear that, buddy. No, it's okay. He, right. he did it to himself. That's right. all I'm going to say. So, and that's one of the things from Pearl Harbor is when I put my the backdrop up on, on myself there. Uh, December 7th, National Pearl Harbor Remembrance Day. Uh, we will never forget. Uh, it's important to remember those that have uh, gone this way before us. Uh, but Peter, what's going on? How, everything's off. Well, Peter's in the control room. He has no mic tonight. I forgot. So, uh, uh, But he's back there in the control room doing fine. He just gave me the thumbs up from over there. Uh, and as I said, you know, no columns for politics tonight, but I do have a couple of things I want to bring up. Uh, tonight was the uh, DOT meeting at City Hall to talk about changing Walnut Avenue and Ferry Avenue into uh, one lane each way, which I think is a crazy idea, but uh, uh, we're going to get some information on what happened. Also, tomorrow night at uh, City Hall, the planning board is doing a uh, presentation on uh, their vote on the STRs. Uh, on changing some of the format. So if you, uh, if you have concerns about the STRs, uh, good, bad, or indifferent, uh, show up there and uh, let your opinion be heard. Definitely. Uh, we're we're going to be there tomorrow night. Uh, we're going to video it. Uh, we have some questions we want to ask, and uh, we're going to see what happens. Uh, I did get some word, uh, one more thing on the, the past election. I understand the 6th uh, District Legislative Race uh, is tied up, and my understanding is there's going to be some litigation on it, so... I'm not sure if it's a done deal yet or just what's going on or where they are in that process. Uh, also, the write-in ballots, we did get some final numbers. 
uh, John Rostano, 67 write-ins. And our, our candidate here, Walter T. Pug, ended up with 65 write-in votes. So, uh, Good job, Walter. Wal Walter did a hell of a job for being four-legged there. <laughs> Yes, Walter, <laughs> great. You know, I, I, now I wish I would have voted for him. Oh, you see that? Well, Dave, I'm, I'm ashamed. <laughs> you, you should have got there involved with voter for Walter T. Pug. But, oh, well, hey, Walter, we'll be behind you again. Better next time. Uh, he was in the studio last week. Did you know that? Yes, yes, oh, okay. yeah. I was here. Yeah, I was the host. Friday? Fact, oh, no. Oh, he was in the studio. He was in the studio. Oh, okay, okay. That, uh, he called up our show the, uh, yeah, after no. the election. Okay, okay. Yeah. But anyways, uh, Assemblyman Morinello, how are you today? I'm very well, thank it's, you. Yourself, Sam? Uh, uh, a little under the weather. That's why I'm oh. trying to keep everybody separate here today. It's uh, My asthma kicked in, and it's just sort of uh, kicked my butt the last couple days. Yeah. It's been uh, tough, the weather, yeah. with the, the humidity and the heaviness <clears throat> in the weather. It's and then the coldness of the air just, uh, yes. just kills me. Uh, but anyways, we were in here a few weeks back, and you talked about some, uh, some programs that were going on, and... Uh, uh, you want to elaborate a little bit uh, more well, on that and, and really get into this and what's yeah. happening? Sam, we talked briefly the last time I was here, but let me go into the program that I wanted to talk All about right. tonight. And it'll dovetail into what Sanquin is doing with the 716 United. Perfect. And it's a bigger vision for the youth of our city. But when I was on the bench and I had young people in front of me, it really was disheartening because what I saw was kids who had... They were out of school, most of them, dropouts. No visions, no futures, and they were getting in trouble. And so we talked about, well, there's programs we can give them. They've got to become responsible. But what I realized is there's more to it than just that. Okay, The focus had to be keep them in school. So when I was fortunate enough to be elected to the assembly, um, First thing I did was start conversing with Mark Laurie. We would meet at Marketside and talk about some of the things necessary to help lift the city out of its bootstraps, help the youth. Right. And so what we came up with was there should be really two career paths, at least two, but predominantly the college path and then the trades path. But since the closure of Trot Vocational High School, Things moved out to Sanborn with BOCES. That, is, that has increased. But the difficulty becomes, how do you keep the kids in school, keep them interested here? Right. At what point do you start telling them there's other alternatives and there's a life out there? And so Mark decided that third and fourth grade may be the best time to start educating the, the students as to other options and alternatives, head of household jobs. Plus, what I had heard from many uh, employers, many unions, many skilled trades, is there's nobody there to follow up. The ones that, had, that we knew of were starting to retire or they were passing or just they were just, they finished their work career. Sure. Um, but there was, the, there was a void coming up behind them. Well, that was, you know what, that was the biggest thing. That I, I, you know, we've talked about on, with, on this show uh, with other people is, uh, once they shut track, shutting track down for the vocational end of it, it was probably one of the biggest mistakes because not everybody is suited to go to college. Right. Some kids just need to work with their hands to be able to, to do some type of trade. And, and getting rid of track, put, I, I think, put our uh, children of this city backwards. Um, I think it was, it was a focus on more of the college uh, courses moving forward in that area, and they sort of let the trades lag behind. Right. Now, it, part of the vision was there's money being spent by governments, both state and federal. There's no accountability. They're throwing money at what they're perceiving to be the problems, but not getting to the root of how do we prevent the problems. And just giving kids summer jobs is not the root. No. You've got to change the entire culture. So one, one of the things that we decided that would be meaningful is to engage the unions because they have trade programs. Right. They have training centers. The plants have training centers. BOCES has training centers. So it became very evident that there was no need to build a, uh, a, a school within the school for the trade programs. Utilize the resources that are out there 
that would not tax the taxpayers. It wouldn't tax the budgets. You'd provide transportation, but use the resources. Unfortunately, COVID delayed a lot of it for a year or so. We're just getting geared up again. But last year, with the assistance of Randy Palladino uh, over at Labor's Local right. 91, Dickie's son, he taught basic OSHA, and we were to gra- able to graduate 19 high school kids with their basic OSHA cards. During wow, that's, that tra- that's incredible. And during that training, because they have a magnificent training center yep. over there, yep, Sabatini I've, Center. Okay? I've been over there, and it's a great, great facility. So as part of that, they also were exposed to what some skills would be. And there was a young lady who was going to be a welder. She, and they <clears> say she does a phenomenal job. She's still in high school. Wow. So what we're going into now, so with that being done, we decided that how do we, or we discussed, how do we open up the trades the other trades to these students. And so we came upon and uh, talked to the other trades, whether they'd be willing to all come together at the Labor Local 91 Sabatini Center and be able to explain to these kids what their trades are, what the benefits and advantages are, and explain their their apprentice programs. We now have everyone uh, lockstep. We've got the iron workers, the electrical workers, the carpenters, the brick masons, and I believe there's one other that we're starting with, and I apologize, because this, we're, this is all new and it's all coming right. together. But in, light with, in line with all of this, what, there was a vision that we still needed to occupy these kids outside of the school hours, outside of the trade hours. And... I, be, I, I have a friend, Sanquin Starks, who's sitting here with me. And he has a program called 716 United. And when we looked at what that program was in talking to Sanquin, it came evident that that could also be part of this whole philosophy to take care of the youth in the entire way. Soft skills, discipline, hard skills with the, the trades, okay? and then some sports in. Right. So Sanquin has a program called the 716 United, with it, and it started with 7th and 8th graders playing basketball, correct? That's correct. Right. Teaching them. But within it, and I want Sanquin to explain all of it, but there's discipline. They have to have certain grades to be able to participate. They can't get in trouble. They have to be good stewards of the community. Okay, and then there's three parts to that, right, Sanquin? That's correct. That's correct. We have... Uh, uh, like you were saying, some of in the uh, sports aspect, uh, we have our mentor aspect, and then the educational aspect of the program. So, like, it all comes together to form 716 United as a whole. The mentoring, can you tell us a little bit about what your vision for the mentoring is? So, the, the mentoring, it, it, it plays it plays a part, it, it just like the assembly was saying, uh, how, you know, our kids, they need focus. Um, and... So you, you have to reach them at a young age. Uh, basketball gives us an easy opportunity to do that. Um, you know, when I was young, uh, to this day, um, you know, my coach was one of my biggest mentors. He kind of, you know, you know my, or coaches as I was coming up, they, they, they pushed me in, in the right directions. You know, that's how I got to college. Uh, that's how I knew about a lot, of, a lot of different things that maybe I didn't even learn at home. Uh, we, 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 uh, we, we formed to do the same thing. Uh, we have about five to six coaches right now. We call them coaches slash mentors. You know, not only do we coach basketball with these kids, but you know, we often take the time uh, away from, from the court uh, to make sure they're doing well in school. Um, we've, we get phone calls from their teachers, their guidance counselors, their principals. A lot of times they'll reach out to us uh, if, 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 if there's something needed to, to be said to the, the child. Um, you know, to, for somebody outside the home. Well, you, you know, that's always been a big, big factor here. You know, if, if a kid's involved in some type of sports activity where they have to be accountable, yeah. uh, then they're off the streets. They're doing something productive. Uh, one of our first uh, couple shows, we had John Hayes, a uh, former basketball star in Niagara Falls High School, St. Bonaventure. And, uh, you know, he said, you know, growing up, that's what he did. He got out of school, played sports, and if he didn't do well in school, he was out of playing basketball. So yeah, yeah. I think we got away from things like that over the years. And, and to see uh, you bring a, a program like that back, in fact, you, you know, you've been on our show and we talked about it. It's just a phenomenal uh, uh, thing that's going on here right now. I think, I think what, 
what's missed mostly in in this is the relationships I gain. Right. Um, I think that the relationships that I have now with the kids will probably last a lifetime. And uh, they'll reach back to myself or some of our coaches and ask for advice. Uh, if they need something, I think they'll always come back to us. And it's been like that for some of the kids that I have, uh, I, you know, I, I've, I've had come up in this program. I think right. the last time I was here, Sam, I, we had one team. Right, you know, exactly. We've grown to five now. Uh, so, you know, we have almost 100 kids every week. You know, That's phenomenal how yeah. it's grown. Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny. We did the Niagara Falls, High School, uh, Niagara Falls Fire Department uh, versus the Police Department charity football game. And, uh, you know, a couple of the kids from your programs came over. We interviewed them. And I said, you know, this is your first interview. When you guys hit college, uh, just remember this day. You did your first one here. So, uh, they, they were pretty excited and psyched about that. And, and we're looking forward to doing some other things uh, Absolutely. Uh, with your program. But, but anyways, go ahead. So anyway, let me... So what is happening is it, Sanquin is the author of the 716 United program, but he needed to be an entity in order to be able to start looking for grants. Right. And most grants require at least three years of financial and three years of operation. So we're not at that point, but how do we get to that point? So the Boys and Girls Club uh, reached out and they are partnering with Sanquin. So the program will be under the umbrella of the Boys and Girls Club, but I want to make it very clear, it's Sanquin's program, and we will put together a curriculum, and our, our, our vision is to copyright that per curriculum for, for Sanquin. But <clears throat> being under the auspices of the Boys and Girls Club, it'll offer him an opportunity and exposure to all the clubs in the country. Oh, that's fantastic. But the important thing is the, the trades program, the teaching the kids to stay in school, has a couple uh, uh, benefits to it. One, it will put them in a position to be able to participate in Sanquin's program um, because the more kids we keep in school, the more kids will participate. What he started with, it's my understanding, is the younger kids, his feeders to the high school. Yeah. And now he's coaching. Right. Okay, they ask yeah. him to come coach. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah uh, well, that's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, a joy of mine, as uh, some of you guys might know. Uh, yeah, I've, I've been a basketball coach for a long time. I played basketball my whole life. And this year I got a chance to uh, coach with Coach uh, Brad Berry on the varsity level, also with the JV team as well. Uh, some of my young guys made the team this year, so I'm, I'm still around, right? The, those relationships, they, a you know. little continuity as they move up they, the They keep going, and then I got my younger guys who, uh, you know, they come out to the games, and they watch some of the guys that they know we've trained, and they see us, and, they, you know, they talk to us, and we're like, hey, listen, you stay focused, you're next. And, and they're really feeding into it, I think. Um, I, I tell you what, you know, what, what was disappointing to me is how many kids I had to turn away, uh, yeah. and that's why I'm so happy to – uh, partner with the Boys and Girls Club because I think now instead of having 100, 120 kids on a regular basis, I think now we can touch, you know, maybe four, 500 kids at one time. We'll be able to get more mentors, more coaches, more kids in the program. I think 716 United will eventually be uh, the hub that every child, no matter what you're doing, basketball, you know, if you want to get into trades, if you want to, if you, you want to apply for a job, you know, they'll, they'll come to us first. And that's, that's kind of where I see it going. I mean, that's that's a that's a big big vision. That's that's something great to hear. You know, I think really kids in the in the area just lost faith of what's going on. You know, they they it was a dead end. You know, they were going nowhere. And you know, with with the school program, with the with the work trade, uh, the workforce development, uh, and then the basketball pro program, they're going hand in hand and. Uh, it's it's a perfect uh, recipe for success here in Niagara Falls. I, I agree, Sam. Yeah. I, I agree. We want to keep them in school, Sam. Well, that's okay. important. Now, speaking of that, with with them being in school and with with these, the workforce development, are they getting any credits in school, or is this a separate? Uh, well, here, pro here program here, or, or here's what we're working? looking to do. Okay, and this has just come about. So, like I say, this is a a building process. So it's not going to happen overnight. Right. But. You get so you need so many credit hours in an apprentice program to move up to a tradesman. Right, exactly. Well, what we want to do is see if the uh, Department of Ed of New York State <coughs> will accept the premise that this benefits the education of these students and allow and allow uh, the Department of Ed to count 
in school training hours towards the apprentice hours necessary to move up. So that's a target um, that we need to accomplish so that these kids can feel really, really fulfilled. But they stay in school. Right, that's now, the big thing. And as part of it, in order to get to the younger kids, because if you wait till they're a senior, you've lost them, eh? or they may have already dropped out. So what uh, Superintendent Laurie's vision, of course, was to start the education process in the third and fourth grade by means of guest speakers. So one of the concepts would be to videotape the classes and videotape the presentations of the various trades and then have a student in the program, a junior or senior, accompany the tradesman with a video and go to the third and fourth grade and make presentations to try and get in their heads if they don't want to go to college. These are head of household jobs. Their training is there. <clears throat> um, and, you know, they're talking about the build back and the infrastructure bills, right. okay? You could have all the money in the world, but if you have nobody that knows how to put a rivet in or nobody that knows yeah. how to run an electrical line, okay? But, again... You need to educate, and you need to incorporate the entire person. And, and so, that's, that's what we lost here with, with track being pulled out. We, we lost uh, that ability for you know kids to learn that type of trade. Uh, and, you know, and I realize with COVID, uh, everything probably got pushed back because it sounds like this is something that you started a, a couple years back, and now COVID's somewhat over. We can start moving forward. But I mean, I can't see why the state education department wouldn't give kids. Uh, uh, high school credits toward this because it's, it's basically the same type of program as track, but you know I think a little more advanced. Well, conceptually, Sam, <clears throat> you can obtain college credits while you're in high school, so True. it's the same concept to give hours. So we just haven't had a chance to put the program right. together to make the presentation, but that will be coming. But again, I'm spinning back a little bit. We can do all of that, but if we don't have somebody that they can believe in, that they can look up to, a, and occupy their non-school time. And that's why San Quinn's program fits in like a glove with the right. concept. Now, is it going to be successful? We don't know. Is it innovative? I believe so. Does it bring back uh, emphasis on the trades? Yes. And so I think that we're, we're on a formula that needs to be massaged. Now, yeah. I also want to make it very clear that the teachers are involved in this also. This is not to move things out of the school, right, right. but to keep more students <clears throat> in school, which will then create the need for more teachers within the schools. Okay? Kids are dropping out. Now, well, it gives them hope, you know, that there's something, yeah. there's something beyond uh, school, you know, because like we, we all know, everyone's not college driven, you know. Uh, you know, we do need those basic, we need the, the laborers, the electricians, the plumbers, the, uh, the brick stone layers, masons, brick the layers, masons. you know, the masons. Mm -hmm. uh, Drywallers. <laughs> right, so uh, this gives them hope uh, for the future. And, uh, you know, some, now you're talking about, you know, I mean, we'd be more than happy, I'll speak on behalf of my partners here, uh, to get involved videoing uh, some of the programs to, to help take back to the, uh, uh, the younger grades to see what... Uh, that, what, what, what you guys are doing. I mean, we'd be more than happy to get involved in, in some aspect thank you. there. That's in the initial discussion stages, but I'm trying to give a total picture of what the whole vision is. Right. Okay? Now, I've got to tell a story, and sure. I got this from San Quinn. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh -oh. it, let me tell you, no. This, this will tell you the impact that he is having on his students. So last year... Yeah, it was last year. There was a tournament in Pittsburgh he took his teams to, okay? Right. And they stayed at a hotel, and some of the parents stayed at another hotel. They had a very nice pool area. They were able to invite the basketball team over to that particular hotel. Sank, when you tell him what you saw. <laughs> <laughs> he smiles. There's got to be a good oh, it's, it's good. It's so good. It's like, it's wonderful. Yeah, one of, one of, my, uh, one of my players... Uh, he his parents stayed at a, a really a really nice hotel, so they invited us down, and so we take some of the guys over. And uh, you know, as soon as we walk in, you know, it's a it's a nice you know it's like an in, indoor pool, and the kids are just looking around and they're they're just like, oh my gosh, you know, 
look at this place. You know, it was, it was you would have thought we were in like Rome, you yeah, know, we really were nice just in Rochester, I think, or no, in Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, I'm sorry. Pittsburgh, and, uh, you know, it, it was funny because, you know, I, I told you silly, but I said, when, when that happened, I, I had to take, kind of take a step back. Like, wow, you know, you, you forget that like, you know, some of these kids never have right. been outside the city before. And not only just outside the city, because we have things like that even probably within our city. A lot, you, you forget that some of our kids are not able to experience this kind right. of thing, you know. So, you know, every, every trip we take, we try and take them somewhere uh, that teaches them something. We, you know, we usually would visit the local college there, uh, one of the ones that maybe the kids were in Syracuse. We'll try to go on the Syracuse campus, you know, even if it's just to walk around, right. give them that atmosphere, you know. And it's, it's just, uh, it's, an, it's educational. It's just a little different than what's traditionally done, you know, uh, a little different than, you know, sitting them down and talking at them, you know, kind of taking that, that step forward and, you know, actually getting them out there. And, uh, you know, I think it works. I think it works really well. And, you know, I, that's the, the type of things that we're going to continue to try to do. And, you know, hopefully, you know, you'll start to see our kids graduate from right. college and, you know, go to, go to a lot of colleges, you know. Well, you know, the last time you were in here, I think you had just uh, did the tournament in Pittsburgh and... Buffalo, I in think. Buffalo, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you guys, any, any other tournaments since then? Or? Yeah, uh, so two weekends ago, we had a tournament in Buffalo. Um, my good friend, uh, Mike Esposito, the teacher at Niagara Falls High School, he coaches that team, longtime coach, okay. most people know. Great coach, great mentor, great mentor. And uh, th- he took uh, our sixth grade guys down, and they won the tournament. <laughs> oh, fantastic, fantastic. Yeah. Now, your, your 716 program, is that just boys, or do you have girls' teams? Or? No, so the, 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 our team <clears throat> aspect with the, with the younger kids, like, for instance, we have a, a, a fifth-grade team we just started, okay. and we have uh, four girls on that team. Oh, okay. So uh, my vision is to one day have – a boys team and a girls team go all the way up. So from fourth grade all the way to t- 12th grade, boys and girls. And I, that just gives us an opportunity. I know most people think, oh, you know, well, just you know, a lot more kids. Well, the more kids you have, the more opportunity you have right. to mentor, you know. So that's going to give us the opportunity to have more kids around us. And, uh, you know, I, I really can't wait to have a, a boys and girls section because, you know, I, I want to start to mentor even even girls, you know, and have more girl coaches or, you know, right. women coaches come in and, and mentor that way as well. well that is, that, that's phenomenal. I mean, uh, like I said, I met some of the, the, the guys uh, at, at the football game and, uh, yeah. I mean, they were just so intense and so so excited and, and happier than, than, than all just to be part of that program and yeah. uh, the direction you were taking with them. And uh, now to hear that this is part of another mm-hmm. program, uh, school program is, is even better uh, because it's giving them hope. And, yes. and that's, that's that's what we need. We need people to start being accountable. And we, and, and, I mean, you're right in that uh, walk in that walk. Hopefully the relationships that we, uh, we form will get them into different jobs. Like if they don't want to go to college, if they figure out, hey, you know, or we figure out <clears throat> that's not your route, you know, we, right. we could do our part. To, to get them over to the trade jobs or, you know, uh, the programs that are, that are out there, you know. But those relationships is really endless. I, I, think, I think it's so, it, it, it's, it's something that, that we overlook, you know, sure, the relationship sure. that you have with, it, with, with the youth, you know, you, you're forming them. So, um, you know, hopefully everything works the way we want it to. Yeah, and I think programs like this, you know, when people are looking that they, they want to move and, and maybe come into the area, when they see a program like this, uh, it lets them know uh, that the community is, is, is helping the kids yes. uh, and doing something, and, and uh, it, it's all for the better. Uh, but, you know, I know there's probably a lot of people out there listening and said, okay, you know, we're, we're doing this. What's it costing the city tax taxpayers? Uh, how are these, some of these programs funded, like the, the workforce development? or, or uh, I know the 716, the, you're just doing it on your time and things well, like that. Sam, the, the, on, on the workforce development concept, okay, there's the only expense is transportation to the Union Hall oh, to, to local 91 because they're in school anyway. Right. Okay. So the the education part of it is they transport them over to the Sabatini Center and they teach them there. When the presentations will be by the various trades, it'll be while they're at the Sabatini. Now the teachers accompany them because they still have to learn the soft skills. Okay. okay? And so, and what it what it seems to do is calm the classes down, so that the teachers can focus and do the job they do best. 
Um, but as far as expense goes, like I said, instead of trying to build a building and, and uh, put the equipment in, they're re reaching out and using resources in the community, mainly the apprentice programs. Um, now, there is an adult education BOCES over at the old education uh, Board of Education headquarters. Okay. And in there, they have the most innovative welding equipment, advanced machinery equipment. They have a nursing uh, course. It is, it, the nursing course is phenomenal. They have these robotic patients that the teacher can be in another room and the student uh, being responding to the voice of the patient or moving an arm. I mean, it's really impressive. Wow. Wow. They that, also that's what all around six and walnut, right? Correct. Okay. They also are doing uh, carpentry over there and electrical. But these are for it's called adult ed. But anybody that is dropped out of school, now they have capacity that they can still utilize. So one of my thoughts was, and this is all in the thought process that I'm talking about right. now, seeing whether we can also incorporate that into some of the programs. And this is the answer to your question about cost. Utilizing the resources that are already in the community, utilizing private industry for their skills, and utilizing the apprentice programs that are out there. So it's basically directing the student. Okay? Now, as far as 716, there are federal <clears throat> grants that the school has to help students. And this, so we, we, are, uh, we had requested from the school to make 716 one of the recipients of this program. Yes. Because it, 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 it's accountability as I right. started out. And so the money will be utilized. It's the, uh, my brother's keeper uh, funding. Okay? Perfect. Now, the, the Ralph Wilson Foundation, not the one who's doing all the physical improvements, but they also have an educational aspect which 716 fits in. And that's where partnering with the Boys and Girls Club um, w comes in handy because San Quinn will put a budget together. They will guarantee th that they will be able to fill that budget and then they have to go get the funds. But we've also got sources we're bringing in. So your question, will it raise taxes? Absolutely not. Will it improve the quality of life in the city? Yes. That, and that's Will it improve... Perfect. The, the ability for these students to have head of household jobs, to buy houses and remain in the city, yes. So it's u utilizing the skills, the talents, and the brain power in a, a, a different direction that has been there to capture these kids, eh? And Sanquin is the big part of it because if they don't produce or function or stay in school, they can't be part of his program and being part of this program has a lot of advantages to these kids. Right. So it's, it's putting everything together, Sam. And like I said, it's in its infancy, but I'm telling you, it's going to work, and we're working feverishly well, towards that. You know, I really can't see how it can go, go wrong. I mean, it's, it's a win for everybody. Uh, private labor uh, basically has a, a workforce that they're training. Uh, these kids are going to get a, a, a life skill. Hopefully, they're going to stay here in the area and, and continue to use those life skills, buy homes, keep the homes up, uh, improve property, uh, pay taxes on these homes. Uh, you know, and, and, and it's, all that, win -win. It's, it's all win-win. It's all win-win. It's a great program. Uh, I mean, I wish, you know, I was just hearing about it over the last few weeks after talking to you when you were here a few weeks back. But uh, <clears throat> I think the general public uh, really is in the dark about what's going on. And, uh, you know, somehow, you know, maybe listening to this, uh, they'll get an idea of what's going on and we get more community input. Uh, you know, but it, this is one of the best programs I've heard uh, coming into the city well, in quite some time. Sam, when I was on last time, we talked about what I like to do is, when I am interviewed, explain what is happening, what, right. what involvement is out there. You know, and I'm going to use the phrase I use a lot, take the blinders off. We have been beaten down for 70 years. At least. Okay? Yep. At least. And people are very skeptical. Um, and we were very stagnant for most of that period. There are things occurring. Look at the parks. Anybody who has not taken advantage of walking into the park, the reimagined park, 
the park with the barrier taken down so it becomes part of the city. Right. The gorge, the parkway that has been removed. Downtown, the, the properties that uh, um, USA Niagara purchased from Joe Anderson, there's movement on those. Now, this has all happened in like, what, 12 months? Right. Okay? So when you look at the fact that there are some tangible movements that you can physically see, get out and look at them. Let's all be cheerleaders, okay? I'm, we, we can't just be negative. I know why, but let's look at what is occurring because right. the glass is getting full, Sam. Well, that's, I mean, you know, you can only beat a dead horse so long. I mean, what happened in the past happened in the past, and, you know, whether this administration did that or the other administration did something else, you know, we have to go forward from here. Uh, in fact, it was funny you saying about the, the parkway. Uh, since that parkway uh, came down, Two days ago was the first time I drove down Whirlpool since it came down. And I'm looking, it's like, wow, this wow. is what it looks like. I was like, <laughs> totally blew my oh, mind. It's, it, it was it, like, it's great. It was amazing. It's great. Oh, I, I love it. Every time I go down that road, I, I, I always was blown away. I always yeah. point out to people every time I go down that road, there used to be an ugly highway oh, here. Oh my God. And I can't three years that. ago, we took it out. And now this is a beautiful walkway. And I point that out to my people right. all the time. You know, and plus it unblocked that uh, bridge right. and stuff, so that was pretty cool. You know, uh, and we need the development downtown. I mean, with this program and, and, and things happening and getting some of these these landholders that are just sitting on property and, and for, for up teen years, I mean, I don't really, don't really want to get into that, but, you know, that's a whole other issue. Uh, you know, but maybe some of these things happen. He just has to uh, get things moving. I mean, how far backwards can we go? We need to start doing something. Uh, to bring this city. I mean, we may never see it in our lifetime, but I'll be happy as hell if I can see some progress, you know? Well, um, well we you can know, bring uh, back Festival of Lights, you know. Right? That's Festival of Lights. Well, That's a start. There, there, there was discussion between the mayor, the uh, chairman of the Seneca Gaming, and myself at their tree lighting about having a combined uh, process next year and lighting up all downtown. Mayor Bob... And I call Bob, Mayor Restino Mayor Bob now because he really and truly is part of the people. Okay, And I, it, what he's been doing has just been phenomenal. But his vision is, along with the Seneca, is at the tree lighting next year, you do a tree at the, at the casino, and then you take Falls Street. They want to get rid of the name Old Falls Street and just call it Falls Street again. Have that all light up with another tree at the other end, so it just lights up the whole downtown corridor with the lights on Third Street. And with the revision of Niagara Street, it'll make it a lot easier for people to get across. So we got to look at there, there's some infrastructure coming that will be very good. Well, that's good. Hey, what are we doing over here? Well, I know. I I, I got. Are you watching hockey? <clears throat> Thank you. Are, are you watching hockey? <laughs> They're multitasking in this studio, everybody. <laughs> you know, and I'm the sports director. I have to keep up. <laughs> you know, one thing that Niagara Falls is good for is talking the talk. And you know what? You can talk all you want, but you, you got to start walking and showing some progress. And, uh, you know, the two, the two programs you, you gentlemen are talking about, the uh, workforce, and the 716 are, are definitely walking the walk and, and doing things oh. and, and helping moving this city forward. Well, then let's look at, you know, people say the state's not doing enough. I don't know how much more. In the last five years, they've put a quarter of a billion in between the parks and the parkway. Um, they've given a $10 million grant for Main Street, a ten, which is going to reimagine the streetscape. They've given a ten, $10 million grant to the Pine Avenue area. Um, and there's going to be some focus on reimagining the city market. There are some negotiations going on, and uh, there will be interviews with the farmers to determine what their, their likes and dislikes are. I mean, I have a vision for the market of turning it into a mini fennel hall like in yes, Boston, yes. moving the produce up towards the front more and having some, stop, uh, some you know, stores inside, Plus, we've got the restaurants in there. There's some good restaurants in there. You well, know? You, you know, Angelo, you and I aren't too too far apart in age, but, I mean, you can probably remember when the city market was vendors from Pine Avenue all the way back to Elmwood Avenue, and the place was packed three, four right. days a week. Well, yeah. I go back a little further than <laughs> you, Sam. 
in the front of that market, Leo Simone, right? I don't know who's going to remember. <laughs> he had, it was like being in Europe. He had the fresh, it was that was on the Pine Avenue. Right, right that was okay? the beer barrel section Th- over that there. That was, all right, <laughs> but it was all the displayed fruits, and then you'd right. go in, vegetables, all the fresh stuff, things you would see in a movie in Europe. Correct. Okay, and then behind it, okay, you had Johnny Tito's office, who ran the market. Okay. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but things were vibrant, and things yes. happened, and they catered because people went to the market and they want to make bring it back. They want to make that the hub. And really and truly, that whole area has become an international melting pot. Yeah. When I drive down Pine Avenue, it reminds me of the old East Falls Street when I was growing up. You had all the nationalities, all the races. And everyone got along, okay? And I see that happening on Pine Avenue. There's immigrants coming in, and they're fixing places up. And we need to make it's that more of see. an international market there. But there is a vision, and USA Niagara is focusing on it. So, you, you know, let me ask you this, Angel. How, you know, you, you're telling us now, you know, this, this section's getting X amount of millions, uh, another one X amount. What people don't hear about it, I mean, is... is well, these are not pub- reporting it, or they just... Sam, like, these have been published... The- they're in the paper. The, the trouble with it sometimes, I believe, and I'm not being critical of any cert, any any person, people are not reading. The, no. the art of reading and the They're art lost. of paying attention seems to have been lost in the shuffle, okay? And so when people say, well, we didn't know they were getting it, it's been on television, it's been in the news, there's been discussions on it, there were public hearings, there okay. were... Uh, uh, scoping meetings for people to put in, and then we, the grants were won based upon some of those. Some the state did, okay? Some were traffic studies, okay? So, and I want I, I want to go back to the Ferry and Walnut section right. and the Niagara Street, because they're reimagining Niagara Street. Now, I don't know if anybody realized, but the way Niagara Street was, you had to cross seven lanes of traffic, equivalent of seven lanes of traffic, to get up 3rd Street, and they wondered why nobody would go to 3rd Street. When you looked across Niagara Street, all you saw was the empty Gazette building, the empty lot, okay, and nothing else. People aren't, strangers aren't going to walk across seven lanes of traffic. So this should facilitate some of that movement up that street, which will help develop that also. But these are things that are actually happening, okay? Now I wanted I wanted to spin back to the, um, the 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 one the one lanes on the streets. Whatever happens, I'm not I, I have no opinion. It's up to the people. But what it reminds me of there's a thing in sports called muscle memory, eh? okay, what, Right. Muscle memory is repetitive mm. actions where your muscles are trained to just function sometimes without having to think about it. Well, our brain is a muscle. Now. Growing up, Ferry Avenue was two-way, Walnut was two-way. And then when they went through urban renewal, they decided that we're going to get so much traffic that we had to make them one way each. But muscle memory, those other than people my age don't remember they were two-way streets. Yeah, that I don't remember. You don't remember that. (laughs) And in 10 years, if they go to one lanes... Nobody will remember there were two lanes, well, okay? You got a point there. So it, it's what we're used to. Okay? How many times have somebody gotten in the car, going to point A, and ended up at point B because they're used to going to point B, and, and their, their, their mind just took them to another right. location? So it's the same type of concept. Well, you know, I, I have to admit something. You know, they get turned off by the, the news media at times and sometimes the local uh, print media, you know, because it's just, you got to decipher through so much crap sometimes. It's just, it's a turnoff. But, uh, uh, you know, I'm going to say, yeah, I didn't hear from probably because I just didn't read it in the paper. And, uh, uh, you know, I'll take, uh, I'll admit I was in yeah. error there. But, uh, uh, well, the other, the other good thing is the mayor re- <clears throat> released his spending plan for the rescue money. Right. And it's a phenomenal plan. It's been out there. It's detailed. He will talk about it. I think he might have talked a little bit about it on the show, okay? Yeah. Right. So, Sanquin, do you remember when Ferry and Walnut were two ways? No. <laughs> you weren't even a thought. He wasn't even a thought. Okay. If Sam don't remember it, remember. nobody does. And, and I grew up on 25th Street between, between Pine but, and Walnut, and I always remember Walnut being, yeah. 
you know, one way. Uh, so it would yeah. probably just be a few years before that uh, uh, that that happens. Yeah, you probably got it maybe about 15 years on me there, Angelo. Okay, <laughs> well, that's all right. I'm still young at heart, though. There you so go, buddy. I've been told by certain people I, I, I should start growing up, but it's like, why? Uh, why? Yeah. Yeah. why at this point? <laughs> at this point, yeah. Uh, but, I mean, you know what? I'm, I'm glad we were able to talk to you. Now, I did hear something else. Uh, December 17th at St. Mary's Hospital. Uh, helipad. The helipad. They're de de dedicating a helipad. They've already repositioned re uh, the parking lot. They've redone it. Um, difficulty is if there's an emergency and they have to use Mercy Flight, they have to land out at the airport. So you still have a transportation issue for emergencies. All right, going either from this area to somewhere else or from an accident site to the area or to the hospital. Okay. So they will be dedicating that helipad um, on that date. I think, what did I say? It was 1.30 maybe? 1.30, December yeah. 17th. So, but but it's, it's progress that's happening in the area. You know, Memorial Medical Center has, has just got their mobile van, okay? Right. Which was announced, um, I believe, today. I forget which day. I know I couldn't make, I was invited and I had a, a conflict. But we have to look at what is actually progressing here, okay? That mobile van is phenomenal, okay? Right. Because it'll service the areas where there, there's lack of transportation, okay? Um, so it's everybody working together. It's not about my fiefdom and your fiefdom, right. okay? Like they had a function in Lewiston the other night. It was They had the electric <coughs> light parade. Right. The city of Niagara Falls allowed them to use the stage. It's cooperation. Why right. should every town and village have a stage? Everybody help maintain it, but we, we it, it's about what's best for the taxpayer. Right. Exactly. So exactly. there there is a lot of cooperation going on. There's a lot of communication, and that's what we need. You know, we have to put aside our you know this is my city, this is your city, this is your town, and and, and do things together because. You know, uh, we're not that big, you know, so everyone helping out each other yeah. only helps the whole. Well, look at what San Quinn's doing. They're letting them use Gasco. Yeah, right? Gasco, uh, the 66 uh, commu Street Community Center, Center, the Ralph Wilson Center. Okay. Uh, the Boys and Girls Club, uh, you know, occasionally LaSalle Middle. Okay. Um, you know, we, we need all of those. So. Right, so you so I mean, it gives Sam, everybody an opportunity yeah. because they're all over the city and Somebody way out with cell doesn't have to worry about always going right. downtown. Yeah. You know, yeah, they got something right there. To, uh, yeah, we well, get to mix it up. You know, and there's some other good movements for the kids because we talk about the fear of law enforcement. Well, last year I was part of a focus group um, with the sheriff, Mark Laurie, uh, Reverend Scott, um, and I'm, the outreach uh, from the sheriff's department. And what we came up with was the fact the sheriffs have this explorer program, but it was run out of the jail, out in Lockport. Well, the kids in the city couldn't participate because they didn't have transportation. Right. Right. The solution was they moved part. They moved. They expanded the program to move it to the city for the last two summers. Well, they know, used the sheriff's vans. They've taken them to different places. They'll interact with them. Okay. So it's about what do we have and how can we use it more effectively as a team for the betterment of everybody. Well, and that's why I keep saying, I'm sorry, I keep cutting no you off, but <laughs> I keep saying, take the blinders off. Okay, people, please. We know it's not perfect, but you know what? It's perfect for me right now because Correct. I can see progress. Go on, Sam. Yeah, well, I know we, you we want had, to talk. We had Sheriff Mike Phil said in here a couple of weeks <laughs> ago, and uh, he, exa he talked about that program exactly that, you know, it was way out in Lockport and how the kids from the city, so they brought the program to the kids in the city. And, you know, he had some great things to say about it. And uh, uh, he said after the, you know, the program, some of the kids who had a fear of the police had a different perspective on what was going on. And, and, and that's what they're trying to convey to kids in our community, that you don't have to be afraid of the cops. They're there right. to help you. But the other advantage is they have resources, and they get right. grants that can benefit the whole city. So when you take everything together, you take Sanquin, okay? Take Mark Laurie, take the sheriff, take the Niagara Falls Police Department. Let's take the firemen. Right. Look at what they do, okay? The toy drive is not just about toys, okay? And now because of COVID, they couldn't do it, but they do a Christmas dinner for the seniors. They actually 
go in the past have gone to the nursing homes, transport them to uh, Antonio's. They have music, entertainment. They feed them and they give them a gift. Okay, so there is so much community it's about involvement, back. and and that's what it's all about. And they do all of that on their volunteer. It's their right. own time. You know, sp speaking of uh, giving back, I, I just wanted to quickly uh, plug. We have a, this Sunday, we're doing our uh, first ever uh, 716 United uh, toy giveaway. And it originally started for the kids in our program. We're just going to give uh, give the kids toys who uh, could use them. Uh, but uh, myself, the coaches got together, the parents, and uh, we're going to do uh, for, for the entire community. So anybody wants to come down, uh, we'll be at the uh, a brand new teen center down on Pine at uh, 2526, I believe, Pine Avenue. It's called Game On. Uh, it's uh, That's brand new. Is that the old uh, Time Cleaners? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Oh, she got opened? Uh, I, I think she's still working on yeah, some stuff with the was city. A, there but, was a few snags. Yeah. Um, but she, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about that. Now, I want people to understand it's a teen center, but they're going to do educational. They will have computers okay. there. Yes. She will teach them. So everybody in the community is starting to reach out so that people can't say there's nothing to do in this city. Okay? I mean, there's that's great. a lot we, to do. We actually wanted to talk to whoever was opening that up about uh, some type of program, what was going on, and, and, and how we could... Uh, uh, sort of utilize what yeah. they're doing. And, you know, and Sam, I'll get you, I'll get you. It's a good friend of mine. Yeah. Uh, her name is Shana Smith, and I'll get your information. Okay, cool. And, cool. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's, it. a, it's a very unique place. I, I don't think we have anything like it in the center, I, I think, or excuse me, in the city. I think people should definitely uh, look into it. It's going to be a great place for our kids. I actually plan to have it as one of the hubs for 716 United because, uh, again, great mentors there. Uh, and, and, and things to, for, for the kids to do, you know, outside of classrooms and, and, and things, you know. So uh, I think people should definitely look into what it what what they're trying to build right. there. Well, that, that, I mean that's fantastic, and, and that's what we're trying to do here. You know, the community accountability on what's going on in our city, and and, and make people aware of some of these uh, programs and, and things that are going on for for our youth, especially for our youth. Uh, so again, I'll speak for my partners. You know, anything that we can do to help, uh, recording, video, you know, what, whatever. Uh, you know, we want to be part of that uh, rebirth of Niagara Falls, so to speak. Let me let me point one other good thing out. We talk about the youth. We have a few more minutes. Yeah. Anybody, I, I urge people to drive down 17th Street, drive past the Boys and Girls Club. Next to the club, there was a little playground, and then there was a home that uh, was not occupied, okay? And it was owned by Larry Villardo, who has the pizzeria. Right. Larry worked on getting that home to the boys' club. I was able to get Mark Cerrone involved, Mark Cerrone, Inc., and they did the demo free of charge. The boys' oh, club only had to play sweet. the tipping fee for the, uh, the, break? The, the, the debris. However, Modern cut their amount as a donation. But when you drive by there now, and it was community built to right. okay, volunteers. So now it's a great little, it's a better pl uh, playing area. It solidifies that street. It expands the Boys and Girls Club. So the reason I'm pointing all these things out, as I said before, take the blinders off, look around, okay? And then I'm going to urge homeowners, take the garbage off your porch, clean Thank it, you. cut your grass, Thank okay? You. <laughs> Improve that, be part of the solution. Not part of the problem. Okay? Well, you know, the, 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 I, speaking of that, you know, people taking care of their property, that was always my biggest complaint. Uh, and I, and I, I applaud the NBC uh, for what they do. But, you know, every spring they had groups going around to different neighborhoods, cleaning up people's alleys behind their houses. Like, people, take care of your own property. Thank you. You know, don't depend on, on some group to come up and pick up all your garbage. Uh, yeah. People just need, need to be accountable for themselves. And, you know, if everybody does their little piece, it, it'll be a beautiful area again. Well, I'm going to throw out a challenge. You know, the rescue money that the mayor has, he's got repaving, he's got improving alleys. Right. But what I'm going to ask the mayor to do, unless the neighborhood themselves show some interest, don't get, don't pay, repave their alley. If right. they clean it up, let repave them be it. part of the beautification process so that we can improve the entire neighborhood. Exactly, exactly. Um, and there's one other program that I'll <laughs> be talking about, and it'll be in conjunction with 
uh, uh, Habitat for Humanity. They have a critical uh, repair program for those that are in their homes, they own their homes, they don't have the money for critical repairs. So we're gonna be working right. on that, um, not, a ta and a ta not costing taxpayers. There's grants and they do raise funds, so it's not coming out of taxes, but it's to help individuals stay in their homes and home ownership is really the basis of building the city back exactly. also. Exactly, exactly, yep, you're right about that. But anyways, gentlemen, we're almost at the top of the hour, so we're just going to go around the room here. Uh, Sam Quinn, any final words? Uh, again, Sam, I think my third time being coming to talk to you guys. Uh, third you time know, to charm. Third time to charm. <laughs> uh, all, hey, thank you guys. Like I said, since you know, since I the first time I was on the show, we've grown tremendously. And, hey, I like to think that you guys had a part in it, and you, you guys have been nothing but supportive. So, Thank all you guys. I look forward to coming back and when I got 500 kids, and uh, we'll Anytime. talk about that. Bring some of the kids with you, too. <laughs> gotcha. So, Assemblyman, any final words? Take the blinders off. You know, Sam, we all are a team, and we right. have to work together, and we're a region, okay? What we have to look at is we're, we're not isolated. Just my district alone, I have five towns and one and a half cities. Right. They're all working together, okay? And that's what They're sharing doing. resources which makes things more effective. And that's kind of what we have to do. But I'm gonna ask everyone, please, police your own areas. Take, take, bring the garbage cans back in when, after they leave. Don't, don't leave them on the street. Cut your grass, throw the garbage out, please. We can all help. It's not government's job alone to improve the city. It's everybody is part of the solution. Exactly, exactly. I appreciate that. Dave, any final words there, my friend? Yeah, one of the things we were working on with the uh, sports department <clears throat> here is actually doing some broadcast uh, of, with San Quinn, that, uh, maybe broadcasting some of the games and stuff. Um, so I just want people to be aware of that. Uh, we're looking forward to possibly, uh, possibly making that happen. Uh, we're gonna, I guess we got to work out some things before we can do it, though. Right. Um, and also, I'm going to ask, there's somebody that mentioned, a, uh, had a question in here, and he was asked, and the, honestly, I would like to see this too, uh, a na a naming the street after our, the, uh, no, what? Tesla? Tesla, yes. Um, <laughs> is that a, po a possibility? Or is it, I'm having trouble tonight. I'm sorry. I think, but. I think <laughs> you know, I put out a proposal that we tear down the wastewater treatment plant, to either tie into the county or build one somewhere else instead of wasting Yay. money trying to repair. <laughs> and then that's where the original, the, the Tesla uh, uh, turbine uh, building is mm -hmm. and making that a Tesla corridor. So, yeah, I, I think it's a shame. Buffalo's trying to steal Tesla. Everybody's stealing Tesla. Right. It's really ours. It, right. Definitely. So, most definitely. Um, there's, there, that's also being discussed, okay? Is there anything we can do? I, well, I know the Tesla building is owned by an individual. I met him. I've actually yeah. been in the building. And he even told me that he was willing to do to, to sell it to New York State for the right situation or whatever. Uh, is there any way you can see that happening? or? Um, it's part of the vision, okay? It, it, it is not, it, that's not one that I'm going to tell you is going to happen tomorrow, <laughs> right. okay? Um, but... Now, I think that we can morph towards that because there are some other industries coming in, some clean industry. Good. There's a company that took over the old <coughs> bank on um, 3rd Street and, and Fall Street, which uh, used to be, I believe, Marine Midland, and then it became... Uh, J.P. Morgan's. I don't know. Same. You remember oh, yeah. J.P. Morgan's? Okay. Quite well. <laughs> but um, there, there's an uh, um, Alpinessa brought in a pharmaceutical sales company, and now they're taking two floors of the top building. They're, it, they're employing. It's clean. It's uh, head of household type jobs. So there are things that are happening. So, Good. But yes, I can see that happening on the Tesla because I think it's ours, and it's important that we do that. Yes. Yeah. San Quinn, one for you. Uh, when is your next tournament? Uh, it'll actually be next weekend. Uh, December, I think the December 18th, that's Saturday and Sunday. And that's here or where? That will be in Buffalo, uh, West Seneca at the uh, X-Gen facility. We have uh, actually two of our age groups that will be competing in that one. Great. Okay. Great. How, about, how much attendance do you guys usually get from local? You know, actually, last our last tournament, we had more than I was used to seeing. Um, 
I got to get you guys some video. You know, we usually take video and pictures and stuff like that. But yeah. uh, recently, uh, the community have really been getting getting behind us. Good. Uh, we, people have been coming out, checking the kids out. We've had people donate uh, to be able to get jerseys and uh, pay for tournaments and stuff like that. Uh, uh, you know, until we get some other things going. So, um, I, you know, the community has been great. I mean, that, this is it's the reason that we've been able to continue uh, until we find other means, uh, you know, and, and resources to be able to to, uh, to to provide for the kids. So, you know, everybody's been great. And I hope that it, it just gets better. Right. Right. Great. And let's great. not kid each other. It's only because of San Quentin. Oh, <laughs> I'm well, serious. Well, make sure, make sure I, I am serious. Or, or, okay. okay. Well, one more thing. One more thing, ge gentlemen. I uh, definitely appreciate this. I'm behind both of you, and I want you both to know that in all Thank capacities. Um, Mr. Moran, Assemblyman. Mr. Assemblyman Moran? Yeah, yeah judge. Call assembly. They still call me the <laughs> okay. judge. But I, I love the fact that you are actually trying to move things forward, and I, you got the best, you got the heart in Niagara. Your heart is in the right place, and I can see that. Exactly. I appreciate so that. Exactly. You yes. definitely have our support. All Thank right. you. I don't well, know about Sam. Maybe he don't, but yeah. <laughs> we'll win him over. <laughs> hey, go back a long way with Angelo. But anyway, gentlemen, listen. I appreciate uh, both of you coming in. Uh, it's been very enlightening, and, and you know. The doors are open anytime either one of you want to come in, either separately or together. Uh, we like to talk about some yeah. of the advancements that are going on uh, here in the city. Uh, and I know, Angelo, you know, as, as some of these developments uh, move forward, we definitely like to talk to you and yeah. uh, find out where things are going. Uh, but anyways, folks, uh, uh, that's going to wrap it up for today. Uh, we will uh, see everyone uh, next week. I will have it posted on who our guest is going to be next week. I just have to confirm a couple things. Uh, but to everyone here, I thank you all very much. Uh, Angelo and San Quinn, if I don't get a chance to talk to you before, both you gentlemen have a, a happy, a Merry Christmas. And uh, happy, New Year. Let's, happy New Year. Well, we'll talk to you before that. But uh, <laughs> anyway, let's move Niagara Falls forward. Folks, good night. Have a great week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.